gotten that third inning hit, we never would have had a chance to tie it in the ninth. <laughs> I heard about that. You've gotten really good at jumping. Oh, you should just hear about it. I'm sorry, I slept too late. You know what? You make it on time for meetings and show up late for fun. Speaking about being late, is Evan going to join us? Tragically, I suppose he will. He'll stumble back from lunch at some point. Do you know what time he might get here? I hope never. Well, we can't meet without him. How about meeting in an hour? Could we talk now? You know what the standard policy is, is that the grievance, the media supervisor, and the union steward need to try I'm to- I'm going to try a new approach to federal government employee labor relations. I'd like to fire the guy. Whoa, what brought that on? A change in circumstances that I cannot divulge. Oh, you mean that you're taking over the final stage of the development of the Brace software? Yeah, yeah, we know. Uh, that's supposed to be confidential. Calm down, as usual. I'm the only unauthorized person to know about it. But what does the Brace software has to do with wanting to fire Evan? Everything. Brace, the biological radiation and chemical evaluation system, could save a lot of lives. You don't know how hard I begged to have this project. Oh, yes, I do. You was in Don's office for two months just saying- Right. <laughs> of all the projects in government, I needed one that actually matters. Well, great. Just tell Evan to stay out of the way but my staff will need good morale to get Brace done. Seeing Evan goofing off will sap my staff's morale, but seeing Evan getting what he deserves, that's inspiration. You're not going to be able to fire him. I did the math. 12 Americans are sending their entire tax return to pay the salary of a man who does nothing but convert oxygen to carbon dioxide. 12! You know it's impossible to fire anyone. Think of those 12 people. <laughs> oh, please. You don't have the time for a case like this now that you have Brace. We both know that trying to fire someone can become a full-time job. My kids, my ex-wife, and my money are all in Ohio. Nothing to stop me now from working too many hours. Your friends might. If you stop trying to avoid us, tell me. How many times have you been out since the accident? I've been taking long walks. You know why? Because your license is still suspended? Yes, but also because taking walks is a way to figure out the best use of one's few and precious days. If I can't do anything else, I must get Brace done. But I must manage aggressively. Evan must go. Well, let's move Evan to a new staff and ruin another manager's life? Oh, I'll just tell Evan if he should get a new manager, he will be expected to turn over a new leaf. Evan has turned over more leaves than a hurricane in the Amazon. If he agrees to quit, I can get him some severance pay. You don't get severance pay in the government. Let's do a creative interpretation of federal law. You can award a bonus for work done in the past, Evan did an acceptable job as fire drill coordinator about 10 years ago. I can get him a bonus worth about three months' salary if he packs his stuff. Unless that bonus covers his entire salary to retirement, Evan won't take it. If we have to go through all the hearings and he loses, then he doesn't get a red cent. You forget who you're talking to. I don't lose cases. His performance standard says that his user stories must be properly written. How can you prove writing is bad? User story six. The interface should be easy for the healthcare worker, such as a paramedic or anyone else who is called upon to treat a patient in an urban setting, such as a park or any other crowded area, such as a train station. The English language should take out a restraining order against them. At the grievance hearing, if you say something is a bad sentence, they will ask you to show your performance standards on how to write a good sentence. <laughs> We're crying out loud. How about we film Evan for a day, send the film to 100 random taxpayers, and let them vote on whether Evan should keep his job? 
Okay, why don't you just put a little nasty letter in this file? He has so many, one more won't matter. I do wonder, Bonnie, how you spend all your time defending people like Evan. Because the law says that we have to defend everyone. So maybe we do get stuck defending the Evans of the world, but we were there to defend Ed Bell's employees. Ed was out of line. The union did something right in that case. What did you just say? I can't believe it. The devil must be reaching for a sweater. <laughs> I just hey. can't believe you said that. Hey, it's just, it's just a bad time. <laughs> we're done. Yep. <laughs> Boss, I will be trying to fire Evan. Uh, Bonnie will be trying to stop me. Uh, could you keep it down? He just came in. You mean that bum who the taxpayer should come after with torches and pitchforks uh, 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 finally back from lunch? Uh, yes. Bonnie, Bonnie, could you give us a minute? Hank, don't let Evan distract you. Brace needs your full attention. Sure, but my staff will love it when the guards escort Evan out the door. Bonnie doesn't lose. Before you came on board, we had this guy who never got any work done, and, and Bonnie argued successfully that he had a brain disorder. Well, well, he did, but he never shared that with us until we tried to fire him. Bonnie made us look heartless for not accommodating his medical condition. My staff has watched Evan goofing off for years. Justice finally being done will inspire my people. Look, Evan is not that many years from retirement. Are you absolutely sure he needs to be fired? Actually, he needs to be forced to pay back his last 20 years of salary. But I'm a nice guy, so I'll settle for a dismissal. So Evan will spend all his time trying to find something on you. GS-14s like you tend to take the bullet for grievances. Sure, but I can handle it. You've got to let me do things my way if you want Brace done. Do you want to be sitting in front of a group of executives six months from now explaining failure? How do upper-level managers do that? We stand in front of a group of executives with avoid expressions of, as you can see from the first chart, we have inadequate resources. Later, I will address the communications issues. I've seen too many presentations like that. Just doing things the ordinary way will get ordinary results, and you will be up there doing the PowerPoint of the pathetic. <laughs> okay, do what you have to do, but follow the rules. As I interpret them, absolutely. What do you mean? All rules have interpretations, right? But let's not tie ourselves in linguistic knots. By the way, we need to hire another analyst. Oh, no, no, we've got a freeze on professional positions. Can I hire a clerk? What do you want a clerk for? Code testing, user story writing, programming, database design, project management, technical memos and manuals, that sort of thing. A clerk? A good one. <laughs> On a clerk's salary, you'll be lucky to find someone who knows the alphabet past D. No harm in me trying, right? <laughs> Just don't give us another belly aching semi literate who will be stuck with for the next 10 or 20 years. You'll love this one. Huh. Hello, Carl. How's the mid semester crunch? That is a lot of exams to grade, but at least you're getting some majors in your department. Listen, Carl, I need to hire one of your students. They need to be good at math and a decent writer. That sounds good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't afford to pay for those qualifications. No. Give me, no, 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 no. no. Not, none of this frat treasurer or student council president. Give me someone other people would be afraid to hire. Give me someone who wouldn't even show up in the career office because they have no idea what they want to do with their life. 
Bloggers are good. Chess players are better. Really? Are you serious? Well, I mean, he does have guts. We'd need him right away. Oh, come on, he's had enough education. It's time he starts learning something. He can always graduate later if he thinks it's worth the trouble. I'll be down there this afternoon. So this part of the code is totally full of bugs. It always starts measuring from the time of the first terrorist attack of the day, but what if we get hit multiple times in a day? If we get two attacks three hours apart, and it's been one hour since the second attack... It would show four hours since the second attack. Right, which means radiation dissipation numbers are going to be way off, and, and also, this module is so full of hard coding that it's, it's definitely going to fail in a few years. Awesome catches, Megan. High five. <laughs> you know, this was coded by a programmer who's normally very sharp. Have them start this module over. Then we've lost all this time. Not at all. We've made great strides in how not to proceed. Software engineering is like life. An agonizing process of learning from one's mistakes. People say we should get everything figured out at the beginning before we start programming. No. That's writing grocery lists, not software. And even then, I forget to buy my, more mac and cheese. I'm on it. Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> How did Denise do at um, tennis this weekend? Man, six love and six one in the final and against girls that are twice her age. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. In five years, look out Wimbledon. Mm -hmm, mm hmm You know, we're trying to find a coach, but it is expensive. <laughs> oh, man. She's a great kid. You're a lucky man. Mm -hmm. And I think things will work out for you on the money front. Anyway, three things to cover. First, right. tell me about this new checkbox. Oh, it's for when the healthcare worker and the patient are one and the same. What? Someone might do emergency surgery on themselves? Well, paramed paramedics could get hurt, all right? This, this system is going to be used in the worst possible situations. Good point. Presented at tomorrow's manager's meeting. Wait, I thought only you did presentations there. That's over. That policy was so I could feel good about myself. And you stopped caring about that. Yep. When I stopped caring about feeling good about myself, I started feeling great about myself. Um, hey, you, I, I, I can't do public speaking. You mean you haven't done public speaking? Well, you could have given me more than a day to prepare. You only need to talk for a few minutes. Tell them what you told me and show them how the screen should look. You know this material better than anyone on Earth, so you'll be great. Second thing, our new clerk, Theo, will be joining us today. He'll be working nights only. Um, why nights? <laughs> you'll see. Oh. Third thing, we have a huge problem on our hands. Tom Kanji is threatening to kill Brace unless his office is in charge. What is Tom thinking? His office can't run anything. Tom's thinking that he wants to be the big shot one last time. And because he's an executive, he'll get what he wants, which means that the, the system is going to stink and that people, matter of fact, soldiers are going to die. I'm sick of all our city's unpunished murderers. I heard about a congressman who lobbied to get a military contract for a company in his district. But that company makes an inferior product. So soldiers are going to die because of it. If the congressman would just go out and shoot a few soldiers to win re-election, it would be more honest. So Don just needs to tell Tom that the project stays with us. Tom controls funding. We need to get Tom to like us. All right, so we can invite him over, show him all the progress we've made. Competence to the insecure is like garlic to a vampire. You know, if competence bugs him, we could always send Evan. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Except we can't count on Evan to be here on any day. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you and Tom could, you know, just have an informal chat. Mm, he has issues with me. Someone once Matt asked me what I thought of his performance in the hall and... Uh, as I get older, I lose the ability to lie. 
you should talk to him. Except he associates me with you. True. One of these days you're going to have to break that connection between us by attacking me in public. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you want me to attack you? Pick the right moment. You know who Tom might like talking to? Megan. Megan? Okay, look. Tom once said something to me for wearing a short sleeve shirt after Labor Day. And with the way Megan dresses, Good come point. On. But people tend to like her, and she could always dress up once. Hank, you can't order people on how to dress. True. But she's our best bet for keeping Brace with us. Tough call. Hank, if you order and start telling a young woman about how to dress, you're going to have an issue. Would it kill her? Don's shoes say executive. My shoes say manager on the move. Your shoes say executive wannabe. Her flip-flops say little girl building sandcastles. No, 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 no. Just don't risk an harassment lawsuit, okay? Say it without really saying it. Subtlety is risky with young employees. I told one guy to dress professionally for a meeting. He showed up in a pornographic necktie. Hey, Megan. <sighs> What's up, Hank? I need you to meet with Tom Kanji at three o'clock this afternoon. Just you and him. Why? He wants his office to take over central control of Brace. You're our one hope to stop that. His office? Yeah. Look, I've only been here a little over a year. I don't know how to schmooze with an executive or what, whatever Wait. it is. We need Tom to like us so he'll let us run Brace Development. Ask a lot of questions and take a lot of notes. You said yesterday that Tom's advice is worthless. It is, but he loves it when people take notes. And dress up for this. Got a classic suit with a skirt? We don't have a dress code here. If we were doing something useless like designing executive training, we'd have the luxury of worrying about the rules. Anyway, you've got more than enough time to run home. Tom has seen me dressed as I am a million times. And he's not allowed to say anything about it. But rules govern our voices, not our brains. If you had given me a day's warning, maybe I could have dressed up for yeah, one- Life would be easier if we always got a day's warning. Tomorrow, Hank, don't have too many drinks and drive too fast on Georgetown Pike. We need your brains and charm today. My charm? Excuse me? Okay, negotiating skills, communication skills, sales skills. Pick whichever term you like best and pretend I said that. So after all the bugs I fixed, all the user stories I've written, did you just think of me as some oh, sort of glorified? Yeah. But all the brilliance in the world doesn't matter unless we can defend our project from highly paid nincompoops. Could you take one for the team? I'm not a saleswoman. Can't you give me a fun systems problem instead? Sure. Today's fun systems problem is Tom. You be Tom. What? Pretend you're Tom. We've never done this before. Just play along. I'll be you. <clears throat> I'm curious, why are you planning to move Brace out of our office? I'm concerned about whether your office has adequate knowledge of graphical design. Well, thank goodness we have you to help us. What do you think is the number of, maximum number of icons we can have on a screen at once? Six. Any more than that would give visual overstimulation. Mm. By the way, I hate to criticize my boss, but Hank can be a real jerk. He's insecure because he knows he can't get this project done without your help. But thankfully, we have you to advise us on icon placement, making our screenshots visual masterpieces. Screen design should only be done by those highly trained in the graphical arts. That makes sense. I'd like to learn more about art. I'm really interested in Van Gogh. And that's all you have to do. 
Does Tom know a lot about Van Gogh? He thinks he does. He's been telling everyone to go visit the Van Gogh exhibit at the National Gallery. You know, I asked my college counselor what major would be least likely to lead to sales. She said computer science or sanitation management. So, here I am. Sales are all about listening to people other than yourself, which is probably why generations of playwrights have railed against it. You've got executive potential, and you're going to need that skill. So you're trying to advance your career by sending me to Tom. I'm risking my entire career by telling you to dress up and negotiate with an executive. What? Like you said, we don't have a dress code. I think at the last management training, they went on and on for hours about how if somebody isn't nude, you're not allowed to say anything. And nudity might even be classified as a disability. Of course, those mandatory management trainings are about the only chance I've had lately to get any sleep. I think that's what they said. Go to human resources, file a complaint against me, and destroy my career. Room 1118, ask for Samantha. You have a great case. Are you trying to destroy your own career? I can worry about Brace, or I can worry about my career. So wreck my career if you must, but please go see Tom. I am feeling really uncomfortable about this. You think Tom's staff would have caught that bug with the two attacks and the hours? This is one time only, okay? Whatever. And please <sighs> stop by the Van Gogh exhibit at the National Gallery before you see Tom. You can count it as work time. Is that legal? The taxpayer pays you to come up with great ideas. What am I supposed to do? Come up with a great idea right now. Let me time you so I can fit coming up with great ideas into the Gantt chart. Seriously, maybe you'll get a brilliant idea while you're seeing the works of the great masters. But if it's not legal, we are both in trouble. You got a point. The number for the IRS helpline. Hi, this is Hank McElroy. I'm sending a staff member on an assignment which might be called a questionable use of government time. I'll cover it. Bill me for two hours of a GS9's time. Look, if you can't figure out how to get around a regulation, you shouldn't have a government job in the first place. Have your supervisor call me back. Just find something interesting in one of those paintings that you can talk to about with Tom. I never took an art class. But you look through thousands of lines of code to find that bad module. Surely you can look at all the colors in Starry Night and see something. Where's the National Gallery? The youngsters. I'll send you a map. I'm off. Oh, and uh, if someone sees me dressed up and has a heart attack, should they send the bill to you as well? They'd think you were sick of me and interviewing for a different job, which would surprise no one. Which reminds me, I hear you've been stopping by the contract's compliance office a lot. If I am going to lose you, please don't go there. They've somehow managed to convince the executives they need four GS-15s. When you've got too many GS-15s, the prime mission becomes justifying those GS-15s. I'm not looking for a job there. My fiancé, Derek, works there. Fiancé? Really? How about congratulations? Well, the thing is, the executive over there loves to brag about his top employees, and I don't recall him ever mentioning Derek. So what? So be careful. Talk to all the dead weight in the building and count the number of divorces and bad marriages. You think someone can leech off the taxpayers all day and then go home and treat their family well? So find out about his work habits before you walk down the aisle. And how is that your business? Well, let's see. Okay, you're a GS9, but your productivity is equal to a GS13 step two at least. That would be about 106 grand. Rule of thumb is that a bad marriage knocks productivity down 20%. And with a divorce, you lose a whole year. With benefits, equipment, prorated building costs, and also general negative vibes in the office, 
A divorce could mean $200,000 loss for the taxpayer. What kind of imbecile would talk about divorce before a wedding? Maybe Derek's a great guy. But you know how you say that if the code doesn't work in a test environment, it's not going to work in production? Why do I put up with you? You're out on Friday night with friends having drinks. Someone says, anything interesting happened at work this week? You, ooh, ooh, everyone else. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Boredom kills. Yeah, but you're majorly ticking me off while asking me to save this whole program. According to traditional management practice, I'm now supposed to cross my arms, strike a dominant pose, and say, I'm sorry if you feel that way. Screw that. If you're ticked at me right now, here's my favorite coffee mug. You can smash it to pieces. That's crazy. <laughs> What's crazy is children dying in the streets because the radioactivity dissipation levels are off. A coffee cup is worth the lives of a few children. If it puts you in a better frame of mind, smash away. And no more concerns about my personal life. My only concern is the productivity of this office. Well, good. Jeremy, I need you to do a favor for me. Concerns the productivity of this office and a possible marital threat to it. He's okay now. So what happened was we were all pretty trash Saturday night and decided to go over Austin's. There was this giant pile of dirt next door because of construction. It was like 20 feet high. My girlfriend Megan was saying we shouldn't climb on it, but then we decided to race to the top. Austin slipped and got the absolute worst road rash. Oh, 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 Just a second. Hey, 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 man. Oh, God, do you know where there's a doctor? Uh, just a second. You say something? A doctor. Where's one? Uh, I think there's one on the third floor. So then the neighbor comes out and starts yelling at us like we're a couple of kids. Can you believe that? Hey, hey. Do uh, can't you, know you where? I'm, talking? I'm on the phone. <laughs> the neighbor said he would call the police, but Megan talked him out of it. She was making a big deal about it, so I had to take her out for dinner and buy her flowers Sunday night. She's good. Yeah, I'm lucky to have her. I can't believe you talked me into that. I got laughed at in the hallways. Good. Getting laughed at is an important skill to have. I need a full report on Derek. He didn't even care if I was hurt. I mean... It's not his job to, you know, do anything, but he, he at least could have asked if I was okay. Well done. I'll, you can tell a lot about people by how they treat janitors. I'll tell Megan to dump him. Wait, how is that your business? Once she's married and has to deal with his tantrums, hangovers, and affairs, you think we'll get good work out of her? And if she complains, she can go to management and have you replaced and have our office out of existence. You can't manage scared. That's like a linebacker worrying that he'll get hurt. That linebacker has to slam someone in every single play. Ah! Hey, oh, man, watch it. I'll be back. Always be ready. Don't worry about me. I've got a secret backup plan to keep Brace going no matter what. Ah. And I'm afraid about what that is. Oh. All right, look, Megan and Derek are not getting married for a few months, all right? So maybe she'll figure this guy out before then. You don't need to risk your career yet. Oh, you got a point there. Good evening, Mr. McElroy. Theo, welcome, and please call me Hank. What the? Hank. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, Theo. Very nice to meet you. Um, I hope you don't mind me asking, but um, what are your preferred pronouns? I'm a guy. Isn't it obvious? No. Oh, should I explain? Mm -hmm. uh, I was a religious studies minor about a year ago. I noticed that the great religious texts used the prostitute. 
or as we should call them, sex workers, uh, as an image of the lowliest of the low. This construct shapes our fundamental notions of class and gender. So coming from a place of privilege, I decided to dress this way full time as a performance art piece to encourage dialogue on the subject. All right. Well, I'm Jeremy Benson. Very nice to meet you. Now, um, our office's focus is on systems development. Now, that does mean a lot of in-person meetings and personal interaction. One step at a time. We'll get there. Theo, we'll start you on the night shift. <clears throat> um, what night shift? The rules say that if you work late in the evening, the managers are allowed to grant comp time. So Theo will work every evening until about 3 a.m. I'll then give him comp time the next day. Whatever the job requires. Well, we'd probably start you on testing. Now, on the days that we do have meetings, y you might want to tone down the performance art. For my statement to have true meaning, it must be continuous. You see, the negative image of the sex worker is a continuous burden on women, and it can't just Put be- Put the meetings on a webcam. Theo can view them at leisure. Okay. Um, Hank, Hank, we need to talk. A lot of people have threatened because of class and gender and very ingrained concepts. As you see, a reasonably well-off male adopted the clothing of the lowliest of the low. You may start questioning those concepts. And that's good. Theo, before we get carried away, we are working on operating systems that are designed to save lives in the case of terrorist attacks. If the world weren't so artificially divided in the class and gender structure, there wouldn't be terrorist attacks in the first place. <laughs> Whatever. Why don't you try logging me? Of course. It was, it was nice meeting you all. I'm hoping this job will be a nice mix of useful systems and social justice. <laughs> uh-huh. Huh. <clears throat> you know, dressing as a prostitute is not a federal protected category. But couldn't we get him to call himself, what, what are they, uh, transgender or gender fluid or something? I raised that possibility, but if a guy says he's a guy, he's a guy. A lot of people are not going to be comfortable with that look. So what? I now have the most talented clerk in the agency at a big savings to taxpayers. Okay, so, so why did you pressure Megan into dressing up and then you let him look like that? Different needs. A manager treats everyone differently where a bureaucrat would treat everyone the same. The two each have a responsibility and will always be enemies. If people see Theo dressed that way, people are gonna think that our office is weird. And since you are so consumed with the thought of people taking away brace from us, you need- That's why we keep Theo hidden for as long as he dresses that way. It's worth it because that guy is brilliant. You should have seen my interview with him I assume you didn't ask his opinion on professional dress codes. We played chess. 20 moves in, he was killing me. I spin the board around and say, you're white now. You got five seconds, make a move. He wins anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look, look, so, so, so he's smart, but how is he going to help us if he's only working nights? He's young, youth is curable. Once he gets over the wench look, he can stop working the vampire shit. Okay, so, He's been dressed that way for over a year, let's say. So that means everybody from his best friend to his grandmother has told him to give it up. So you have some, someone with a very impressive defense of his psyche. You must overwhelm that defense. Find out if this is Pantelleria or Iwo Jima. What are you talking about? In the last 50 years, we've written all these automatic subroutines for computer programs. You can now write in three lines of code what used to take 50. We've also gotten rid of all our shared cultural and historical references. So you now need 50 words to say what we used to say in three. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got all that. What is Pantelleria? An island in the Mediterranean. During World War II, Eisenhower figured the enemy soldiers were looking for an excuse to quit. He bombed the island for a week, and the enemy surrendered without a fight. Right. Now on Iwo Jima. They fought to the last man. Right. Come on, come on, come on. Exactly. 
So is our conflict with Theo more like Pantelleria or Iwo Jima? I'm guessing Pantelleria. At his college, he probably had friends who thought his shtick was edgy, but that won't happen here. All right. Well, if he's so smart, why does he dress that way? The human skull can comfortably hold only about 120 IQ points. Beyond that, the brain tends to fold in on itself and oddities develop. So we have to see which battle is the best metaphor for this skirted savant. Well, I can't just ask him. It's like debugging a program. Use multiple approaches and don't be surprised if the solution leaps out at you from an unexpected place. Well, hello, Hank. I came by to visit your new employee. <laughs> so how did that first hearing against Evan go? I believe we had a bet on it. Well, congratulations. I never thought you'd win this one, but you have a long way to go. How much time do you want to spend on this matter? That you know Don will drop this case if you agree. I expect so. Don wouldn't even fire a gas grill. <laughs> but it's my fight. So, we're going to have to fight every painful and pitiful step of the way. But since you are against me, it's a lost cause. Why not accept a moral victory? Mm -hmm. Hang on a second. Let me call 100 random taxpayers and see what they think of that idea. Oh, put the phone down, Hank. Anyway, where is your new guy? I hear you hired a streetwalker impersonator. Oh, well, <laughs> well, um, Hank is committed to diversity. I would say cheap. You're both right. Why did the meatpacking businesses hire Eastern Europeans and the railroad companies hire Chinese? <laughs> Nothing has done more for the cause of diversity than cheapness. Jeremy, would you ex... Excuse us for a minute. <laughs> Hank, you know, this new employee of yours, you know, he may, get, he may get a lot of harassment for his conduct. He'll change his ways someday. You're not thinking straight. You know, you should be a union steward for a while just to learn just how stubborn employees can be. You must have forgot about that, that other employee, that male employee used to wear that, 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 headlock chain for a belt for years, you know, in protest against management. It was horrible. But let me tell you something. I just thought of it. If you drop this case against it, I'll do everything I can to help you get brace done. And if anybody harasses Theo, just come talk to me. And if you need any transfers from any other offices, I tell you who's a good hooker. I can almost certainly get this case to arbitration now. You expect me to give up? I'm looking out for your interest. You just need to look out for mine. I feed your cat when you're away. Well, you know I appreciate that. Thank you. But you got to get it out of your head that you can fire Evan. We're killing a lot of trees over a case that's going nowhere. Yeah, but when I'm grabbing a burger at 3 a.m., I'm thinking that hardworking waitress is paying a portion of her meager earnings to pay Evan. You know, you ought to think twice about causing trouble. I hear you sent Megan on an assignment that, uh, <laughs> well, you know, it might be violating some federal protocol. I sent her on a sales call. She's grumbling about it to friends. Of course. A good manager is like a surgeon. He gets things out of people they didn't know they had in them, and it hurts. Your career could survive Evan's complaining, because nobody likes Evan. But if anyone else should complain, well... <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Bonnie, you are not allowed to make threats about future grievances. It's it is creative interpretation of federal law. I learned from the master. Hey, Megan, you're looking great. Got you your favorite. Thanks. 
been here long? Since three. I couldn't take my deranged boss or coworkers anymore. Three? Are, are you going to get your hours in this pay period? I'll be fine. How's that meeting with the executive? Oh, I asked Tom about the Van Gogh exhibit, and, and from there it was... <sighs> and Brace essentially stays with us. Essentially? We keep the user stories, programming, and testing, and thanks to me talking about this painting starry night, the design. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, um... <clears throat> The highly contoured forms in the sky contrast with the calmness of the town below. The effect is to show the deep emotions of the moment combined with the yearning for a calm resolution. I, I memorized the label. <laughs> Score! And Tom is shut out. We agreed that Tom takes over the project management and signs off on milestones. Sounds like Tom still got a lot of power. Well, except the only way he knows if we hit a milestone is if we tell him. <laughs> you just turned an executive into your own personal secretary. Yep, and Hank just texted me. Thank you. A brilliant application of bureaucratic rule number six. Let your executive win. Let other executives think they won. Awesome. You're as good a manipulation as your mother. That's very scary. You know, if I told her about today, maybe she'd finally congratulate me about something related to my job. <laughs> no, she'd say, so, Megzy, you finally understand what I've been telling you for years. It's good to smile and smile. Right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'll say congratulations. <laughs> hey, I've got something kind of important to talk to you about. You work with this guy, Jeremy Benson, right? Yeah. Okay, so I found out today he disguised himself as a janitor and pretended to get hurt while in my cube. I don't know why. What? Jeremy would only do something like that if Hank put him up to it. Hank probably just wants to mess with you. Jeremy was probably secretly filming the whole thing in hopes I'd look like an idiot, but I didn't. I stayed calm, kept talking. I had gone uh, two hours and 10 minutes without being annoyed by Hank, but all good things must come to an end. Everybody's irritated with him. I was on the phone with Bonnie about it and she said it was very interesting, but a problem in terms of a grievance. We don't have a dress code, so Jeremy has the right to dress like a janitor. Yeah. Cubes are common property, so he has the right to come in and it'd be hard to say, to say he didn't get hurt because he could say, well, I honestly thought I got hurt at the time. So technicalities work against us. But let's make them work for us. We've got no dress code, and Hank ordered you to dress up for that meeting with Tom. Bingo. A grievance we could destroy Hank with. Oh, come on. Hank messed with us. People like that have to be taken down or they'll destroy you. Filing a grievance is like being a suicide bomber. Yes, you might wreck your target, but... <laughs> That's true. But here's the thing. Hank's already made a ton of waves, and he, and he already has one open grievance against him. The executives would love an excuse to take him out of management. Evan's the one who filed the grievance. Do you know how many times Bonnie has stopped by and said, have you seen Evan? I finally said, doesn't the fact that you can never find him tell you something? I don't want to be associated with people like Evan and Bonnie. So you're just going to let them get away with it? You know what that janitor prank tells me? That he doesn't want us getting married. That's probably it. I'll yell at him tomorrow. <laughs> Yelling at your manager without your union rep present? Don't take that chance. He needs me. He'll back off. You need to understand how these psychopaths work. He'll say anything to get you to calm down, but he'll never forget. He'll go after you and your performance appraisal. Hank doesn't take performance appraisals very seriously. He has to write them, doesn't he? Oh, no. He uses this software that I've got right here. Name, Megan. Performance standard, customer service, project, breaks user stories. Desired rating, exceeds. Put it in and then it spits back, 
Megan has consistently been excellent on customer service, as shown by completing brace user stories way before deadline and with minimal review. Colleagues have consistently praised her work and specifically cited her efforts resolving a dispute that threatened to delay the project. She exceeds the standard. I'm pretty sure so using software like that is illegal. <laughs> You know what Hank's gonna do. He'll find ways to mess up our marriage. Come on, what's he gonna do? Fly out to Las Vegas and come chasing us down the aisle yelling, he's not good enough for you! <laughs> Hank barely even leaves the office. A lot of ways you could mess up a marriage. Say we have a big vacation planned to Hawaii and all of a sudden he denies you vacation just to mess with us. Would you help to destroy him then? It's just a job. What is all of this talk about destroying people? Because the most important thing in my life is our marriage, and I'm gonna defend it. Will you? Hank's not even a if. All right, all right. If he goes after our marriage, I will file a grievance then. Great. Then here's to our Vegas wedding and a better marriage than the Hanks of the world could ever hope for. Uh, hey, uh, I need another round right now. So the requirement said if we needed to do a live test of what would happen if 30% of the city got infected because of a bioweapon, I said either you mean a simulated test or we've got a big public relations problem on our hands. You know, it's glad to hear the project is coming a long way. So outside of work, how has the first month been going? Oh, I've been trying to get a sense of this city. Well, it's fine. You just don't listen to what the New Yorkers have to say. You know, they love to lecture us about how the museums and the operas that they don't go to there are much better than the museums and the operas that they don't go to here. But don't pay attention to that. You just take a day off and you walk from the Capitol to the Iwo Jima Memorial and you breathe in all the treasures along the way. Well, yeah, but I meant the psychological heart of this city. Just by chance last week, I ran into this guy I knew in high school. The one thing I remember about him is the day our senator visited. When it was his turn to ask a question, he began with, <clears throat> as you know, Senator, pollution is a very serious problem. I wonder if every high school in America has someone like that and they all ended up in Washington, D.C. <laughs> well, we do have a lot of that. But mostly, you know, we just have people who are just trying to hang on to their jobs. <laughs> and speaking of those people, you know, my husband and I are having a cookout for some friends on Saturday. And we would love to have you join. My performance is 24-7. Wonderful. Well, I don't know. These parties kind of sap my energy. Oh, so you do this on weekends, too? Yeah. Yeah, you're dedicated. You're working late. Big presentation tomorrow. By the way, Theo, I meant to ask. Um, this performance of yours, how long is it going to be? Less than six months, you know, three to six months, more than six months. Until the world achieves social justice. Oh, okay. All right, then. So uh, more than six months. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I consider it an act of religious devotion, like a vow of silence or a Muslim's memorization of the Quran. Jeremy, you must have more important things to worry about. You know what? I do. Theo, change that 30% infection thing to a more simulated time. Oh, and write up something that if we ever do get a mass biochemical attack of the city, that we'll just have a plan to make improvements to the software afterwards. Don't we want to make sure the software works perfectly ahead of time? I mean, look, it, it, it's a process, okay? And we're not perfect. Now, sometimes we just have to look in the mirror and say, we made a mistake. All right? Cool. I think Jeremy is threatened by my statement. Most people are. 
11 years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. Hmm. And after one year of the medicine committing war crimes against this body, it was Bonnie one, cancer, nothing. I'm not threatened by much. So I can count on you this weekend. If you aren't threatened, others might be. Oh, give them a chance. I have a friend, Wallace, who loves to play chess. He'll probably drag you over to a corner somewhere and play a couple of games. It would be nice to find some chess players. Well, great. You're going to meet Wallace, and I expect to see you there on Saturday. I was missing the chess games. You know there's a lunchtime chess club. That's too bad. That's when I'm sleeping. Well, now, Theo, if you want to work in the days, you can do that. Hank said that if I wanted to keep up my statement, I couldn't work with the other employees. That's not enforceable. Hank would make up rules, would he? He might. He's already trying to fire one person on the staff, right? You know what? He's having a tough time firing Evan, and you would be a hundred times harder. You, you see, you have certain issues that rarely come up in a dismissal here. The clothes? No. The fact that you actually do work. And in all my years as a steward, <laughs> That point has never come, never come up in a dismissal hearing. Hank can't force you to stay on the night shift. He's worried about the harassment I might face. <laughs> if they mess with your bonuses, promotions, or the death size that you are entitled, you talk to me. <laughs> so you think I should transfer to the day shift? Yo, it's not my place to tell an employee what to do. I do worry now that if you don't start interacting with people, all this silence and being by yourself, it's gonna start messing with your mind. That's something to think about. Thank you. Opposing this grievance is for Theo's benefit. If he stays dressed that way, he won't be able to go anywhere in his career. You have no case. Where in the union contract does it say he can't dress this way? The contractors and other agencies will be talking about nothing else. And who was the idiot who hired him? If we fight this, he might back down. He might even thank us later. You know, Bonnie hinted that if we drop the case against Evan, she could explain it to Theo that we're actually looking out for him and that he just needs to stay on the night shift for a while. Can't do it. I walked by Evan's cube the other day and to my great surprise, he was in it. But he was on a website that even out of the corner of my eye, I could see was not work related. You know how I feel? If you're clearing your mind between projects by looking at funny cat videos, that's work related. But this video, this particular website looked not work related with extreme nastiness. If it means so much to you to keep up the fight against Evan, Bonnie's not gonna help us. You'll just have to deal with Theo on the day shift. So you're stuck with a weirdo. Colette, she's got this employee who does something called interdimensional witchcraft. Mm. Uh, Gerald has that guy who, who comes to work in a dog collar. At least your weirdo does work. The rules say you have to hear the grievance within 30 work days. Take all 30. In that time, I can start getting him to wear pants to work. I just tell Theo he wins. I don't want to waste everyone's time with a grievance hearing. A grievance hearing won't take us that long. Exactly. A grievance hearing will take two minutes and we'll lose. You keep trying to change Theo's ways, uh, he, he'll, he'll start claim intimidation and, and add up things to his grievance. But part of my job is to help employees overcome their issues. We put out these job listings where we look for every virtue under the sun and promise executives that's what we'll get. But the truth is everyone's got an issue. In Theo's case, it's that he's living in his own world. I'll, mental, I'll mentor him out of it. You're crazy. That's my issue. But you can hold off the union for 30 days. No, look, I, I don't want to cause trouble. That's your issue. 
Let's say if Brace fails, your children are put to death. What? If software doesn't work, someone's kids are going to die. Oh. I can make the software work, but you've got to let me do things my way. <laughs> you need to be reasonable. That's not my way. When you let me do things my way, you get grievances, anger, words spoken behind our backs, mm -hmm. and progress. You are an impossible man for an impossible project. All right, you got your 30 days with Theo, but you, you need to be more careful. We talked about that janitor stunt you played with Megan. I tell you, Hank, if Megan ever files a grievance... Don't worry I, about Megan. She was pretty annoyed, but I gave her a $200 bonus. What? Well, we don't have any money left for bonuses this year. I used a Form E-1020 for expedited, rapid procedures. I, I, I've never heard of Form E-1020. You take an envelope and put ten twenty dollars bills in it. <laughs> That's totally legal. She, uh, she found it on hidden on page 154 of software engineering using agile methods. Didn't have my name on it. Anyway, she won't complain because she can use every penny. That fiance of hers isn't exactly on the fast track to management. So she can't prove that you gave her the money? Nope. All right. Okay, then. Oh, but speaking of her fiance, I don't want you getting messed up with any of the issues concerning Derek. He's, he's already in some hot water over some time reporting stuff in his office. I, I, I don't want us getting involved in that mess. Time reporting? How <laughs> pathetic do you have to be to cheat on something like that? Tell we me. get more vacation time than most people. <laughs> yes, yes, but it, 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 be glad he's not your problem. And don't make him your problem. So if you allow the user to enter unknown into the dead or alive category, you shouldn't allow them to enter symptoms as well. So if a zombie had a stomach ache, you'd never know. Seriously, if you don't know if someone is dead or alive, you are never going to get good data on the symptoms. So we're going to have to put a hard edit in there. Well done. If we can get agreement on all the other from all the other offices, we have a shot at getting all of Brace done before Labor Day. Speaking of which, and I'm really sorry, but I'm I'm going to need a week off next month for my wedding. I know we're close to getting Brace out. Take a week or take two weeks. I support and bless this marriage. I'm shocked. As long as you're not marrying Derek. Of course I'm marrying Derek. You didn't think I dumped him and found someone else in a matter of weeks? I hoped. God, Derek was right about you. You want to know what a bad marriage can do to a woman? Ask my ex-wife. I thought you agreed to take minutes at the executive meeting. Yeah, um, we got a problem. Dana and Barry want to move decision-making on Brace out of our office and to a more consensus-based model. People are dying! Where is that software? Don't bother us. We're doing team-building exercises. We shall invade that meeting. We're not on the invite list. I'll worry about that. We'll get Theo and Megan in there. They can give presentations off the cuff that are so much better than anything else the attendees will hear. Dean and Barry's PowerPoints have little power and no point. Theo will need to quickly change his clothes. Theo won't budge on the clothing issue. So he's Iwo Jima and not Pantelaria? If he had a choice between dressing normal and whatever this is, if he had a choice between normal and death, look, I don't know, okay? I, I, I can't talk to him. I can't talk to him. I'll work on him. You need to work on Megan. Get her in a better frame of mind so she'll do the presentation. Yeah, and I overheard your conversation with Megan. You need to order her to do the presentation now and just work on apologizing to her later. We are on a time crunch. You can order someone to do a mediocre job. You can motivate someone to do a good job and you can inspire someone to do a great job. Hank, this anyway, is she's annoyed at me right now. This is gonna be a tough problem for you to solve, man. You need to learn to solve this kind of problem. Wait, so you get into a mess and then you want me to solve it? 
What do you think you'll be doing when you're a supervisor reporting to the executives? That's it. No, no, no. You've gone too far, okay? It is not your business to tell Megan who she should marry. If she doesn't marry well, it can wreck her whole <laughs> life. You can't manage our personal lives. I'm sorry that Hank was out of line. Let me know if it happens again. Nastier than I've ever seen him before. Mm -hmm. Did Jeremy have a point? Oh yeah. So, how do you want to divide up the presentation on edits? Why should I help you after you insulted me? Because in 20 years, I'll probably be dead. And you'll either be an executive or a grumbling cubicle dweller. Every choice you make takes you down one path or the other. I can go through the main edits, but Theo knows the third party reporting ones. This is a big moment. I took the liberty of purchasing a suit and wingtips for you for just such a time as this. May not be a perfect fit, but close enough. If I ended my statement for the convenience of the moment, it would be meaningless. So you're willing to stall a life-saving system so you can make your statement? You know how many sex workers are murdered every year? Megan, does it help the world if Theo dresses that way for the meeting? We have to present our stuff together. They're going to look at me, and uh, they're going to look at your outfit. If you don't support me, we have an issue of false consciousness. Is that another category of edits? False consciousness is college speak for something social justice, blah, blah, blah. So if this system leaves our office, what will happen to all those third-party reporting edits? It would be, take a while for someone else to understand them. Meaning bugs. Big, scary bugs that kill people. So, Theo, you might really be dressed to kill. The big parts of Brace have been tested. All we're talking about today is the order of questions and how the screen will look. Your mind has grown feeble since you left, came to Washington, D.C. Excuse me? Have you seen all the testing I've done and all the edit designs I've created? Really? Bet you can't beat me at chess again. You suck at chess. Speed chess. If I win, you get tickets to the Kennedy Center event of your choice. If I win, you go to this meeting in a man's suit. We don't have time for this. Watch us. He can't beat me anymore. I'm way better than you. Really? Get the chess set. They, they could ask us to be at the meeting at any minute. Watch how fast we play. And while we play, I want you to try to distract us. Why? You'll see. This will be quick. Uh, do you really want to make that move, Theo? Please be quiet. You're welcome. Welcome to think of it. Kid, honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every Megan, natural phenomenon. I just concentrated but, uh, to do that. Move. Sorry. Watch out. Can't play this way. This is nothing compared to what a paramedic will go through when using Brace. She might be at the site of a WMD attack entering information. Imagine the noises she, was, she would hear. Oh God, somebody help me. Man, 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 man. She has to be able to see the screen, enter the information, and see the information clearly. You really think the look and feel of the software doesn't matter? That's a weird move, Theo. Yep. Oh, didn't you see he could capture your queen? You ever make a mistake? I've met Derek, never mind. 
Checkmate. Well, you won fair and square. Let's see if this suit fits. But my statement is back on after the meeting. Theo lost on purpose. Of course. I suck at chess. Good distractions. Thanks. I did you another favor. So are you going to let me have the vacation? Don't ask me. If you don't show up one day, I'll know where you are. Wreck your life, but let my conscience be clear. You're horrible. Can you at least do one thing for me after all I've done for you? Derek's office is putting together a party for us. It'll be next Friday. Have a good time. Actually, it might be nice if both bosses make an appearance. Sorry, but I won't be there. We could make these a 24 pause. I'm going to do this presentation, and I helped get Theo to change his ways. The least you could do for me is walk in and say, congratulations. You've been great, but you're getting married to Derek is like someone taking up smoking. Legal, but not worthy of a celebration. People are still talking about that janitor prank you pulled, and it's not fair to Derek if everyone thinks you hate him. Could you stop by for just five minutes? Do a great presentation now and scream at me later. I'm off, but you've had your final chance. The usual step to resolve the first round of the grievance is by having the three of us meet. Megan, I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you. One ticket to a concert of Mozart at the Kennedy Center. That's not an appropriate response to a grievance. Whatever, take the ticket anyway. Knowledge of Mozart is good for your career. See, knowledge of the human condition is- Shut up. Like Megan has charged that you have disrespected her upcoming marriage by making some inappropriate statements. I just can't believe you keep doing that. I, I'm... Huh? Haven't we talked about this before? You've been a man. I hear it. Uh, Derek, Derek, could you wait? Just, just step aside for a, a minute. This will take longer than a minute. I haven't always said the right thing to you, but one thing I am absolutely right about is Derek. That's not it. That's an inappropriate error for a manager to comment on. Derek, could you come back, please? Ugh. Honey, you're muted. What's up? Megan has filed a grievance because I said you're a jerk and would be a terrible husband. It should be just the three of us. If I can prove that Derek is indeed a jerk, this grievance will have to be dropped. Truth is an absolute defense. Well, actually... Or it should be. Derek, how often do you give up your seat on the subway to an older rider? What kind of question is that? So the answer is never. How often do you call your mother? <laughs> oh. I can't believe this. Quiet, everybody. We're just gonna go to the second stage of the grievance if we can't have a productive conversation here. Megan, how would you say Derek treats waiters? You don't have to answer that. Hank, I put up with you criticizing me about work-related things, but going after my fiance is way over the line. It is work-related. I have never seen anyone go through a divorce without a big loss of productivity. And what makes you think we're gonna get divorced? I say you will have an affair. Jeremy thinks it will be general emotional abuse. The bet is a pair of Washington football team tickets. Ask, demand that he be fired. He's declared war against us, so we're going to destroy him. Can we get it on the record that he's a jerk? Thanks for stopping by. Let's go, Megan. Derek, thank you for stopping by. I'll catch up with you later. So what do you want? I want a transfer out of this office. 
We don't have to go for firing Hank, though. How about I apologize? An unfavorable letter goes in my personnel folder and Megan stays. An unfavorable letter means you would have no chance for further promotion. I lost that months ago. This project needs you, Megan. What do you think, Megan? I need to be on a new staff, and Hank has to leave me and Derek alone. We don't have to do any unfavorable letters. But that seems reasonable. Grace needs Megan. Oh, we're at an impasse, so I guess we should go to the second stage. Don will give you everything you want there. We'll take the full 30 days to schedule, since Grace needs every day Megan can give it. So you're trying to stall things out. I learned from the master. Let's stay out of each other's way for those 30 days. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Wait, Bonnie, what do you think of Derek? Not my place to judge. Meeting is over. We can lower our guard. Could you tell Megan that Derek will be a great husband? You think he's fine, right? Um, <clears throat> it's not my place to judge. Hi, Nancy. Is Kendra still mad at me that I can't make it to her birthday party? But technology is so good now that Skyping into a party is just as good as being there, right? If it's half as good as being there and I Skype in for twice the length of the party, that's mathematically as good as being there, right? Hello? Hank. Hmm. You know this grievance from Megan could really hurt you. And I know that Megan loves working on Grace. So I'll tell you what. I could tell Megan that I chewed you out and that she should realistically accept that and keep her career on track. That's nice of you. Thank you. I said I could. Oh, the Evan case. It's a race against time now. I can't include it in any deal. You know, yes, yeah, somehow you wanted arbitration. But I can put a stay on that dismissal. I can appeal the ruling, and I still have the Mayor's Systems Protection Board. I'm not the only one bothered by Evan. Have a heart and tell him to give up. You know, that arbitration law sent shockwaves through the union headquarters, and they were willing to do anything, and I mean anything to get you to relent. All you have now is desperate gestures, trying in vain to stop the glorious day. To the land, sweet beauty. You know, all this singing reminds me of something. I thought I had it here. No, that's not it. Wait a minute. I have something signed by all of the choir members welcoming you back. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Now, rehearsal is tonight, and I expect to see you there. I, I've got to finish up some, some things to get ready for the final certification of race. Find a certification of Brace. And when Brace is done, what are you going to do, huh? Jump from one crisis to the next so you can avoid your family and friends? Oh, Would I you know. Please? I know that's popular in this city, but you need to do something different. Aren't you at least going to say thanks for getting Brace done and saving a few lives? Thanks. But could you also save your own life? Oh, and Hank, no matter what happens with the Evans case, let's remain friends, okay? Great presentation. I mean, they certified Brace is ready to go. You couldn't wait to do that, could you? 
I was thinking about what you said about saving lives trumps other statements. I remember reading something about Orthodox Jews. They live by a lot of rules, but if they need to save a life, that trumps all other rules. They can drive on the Sabbath then. I figure braces saving lives, so I can wear a suit for meetings, but I must change back into my statement attire as quickly as I can. Thanks. You know, you could try going with the men's clothes on a, a day here or there just to see how it feels. Maybe someday, but for now, the struggle goes on. Congratulations. Oh, Success. Yeah. But we got big trouble. Oh, the article came out. If you'll excuse us, Theo. Oh, of course. Hmm. <sighs> The Federal Employees Association has named Hank McElroy as the worst manager in the government. He has had three grievances filed against him with a staff of five. I had received satisfactory performance appraisals for my entire career, said Evan Johnson, a former soldier and father of three. But after my supervisor, had his drunken driving accident, and his wife left him and took away his children, he directed all his anger at me. He's got that. He's got dad. You've got drunk driving. You've got absentee father. Not ideal. Nope. I'll write a letter to this newspaper explaining Evan's sorry performance. Americans are not in love with lazy bureaucrats. And then Evan will accuse you of lying. We need to drop our case against Evan. But we're this close. For the sake of the taxpayers, let's pull this one off. I am getting a lot of pressure from the union to, to pull you out of management. If we drop the case against Evan, the union will back off. I have one ace left to play. <sighs> Am I gonna like it? No, but bear with me. Let's have Bonnie meet with us. Well, 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 what's the point? All this publicity only helped Bonnie's chances of victory. I know, I know. Bonnie! Yeah, Don and I are talking. I did read the article. Yes, we have an offer. Now, at least for this meeting, let's keep the pressure on, okay? Hey, Jeremy, could you bring that report by? Hank, is that report you asked for? Ooh. <laughs> this is good. See, Jeremy logged all the websites Evan has visited. Since Evan has a lot of time on his hands, oh, he went to some goodies. How about this one? Or this one, hmm? Whoa, uh, uh, this kind of monitoring is illegal. Now, now I've been backing you up all this time. And... Back me up one more time. I think Bonnie will fold. Why would she? With this kind of publicity, she's forced to keep up the battle. Hmm. You can back me up for five more minutes. Oh. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> well, first, I want to say that I'm so sorry that the newspaper article came out so harshly. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I have something for you. Uh. Hmm. Man, gotta love them. Mm. Selective enforcement? You don't log where everybody else goes, please. An arbitrator would throw this out in a minute. We're not backing down. You think someone like Evan doesn't have other things to hide? You know we could file a suit over it getting released. We prefer not to release it, but I'm concerned it might make its way accidentally into public hands. If that happened, I would be appalled. Wouldn't you, Don? Completely appalled. Mm. Okay, you could make Evan look bad, but the office would look as bad as the employee. 
we pulled off brace. The executives would tolerate us for a while. Nothing personal, Bonnie, but your newspaper article only inspires me to make life even more difficult for that public payroll parasite. Don, you are a very intelligent man. Do you really want Hank to spend his entire time digging up dirt on his employees? Bonnie, Hank can go ahead and pursue this case as long as he likes. I'm never backing down. <laughs> but here's a revised deal. Mm. Evan gets his three months of severance. As a way to encourage his resignation, I'll resign as well. What? What? Evan can claim to be a hero for getting rid of me. Most of the union membership would cheer my departure anyway. You, you don't need to do that, Hank. I always said I had a backup plan. My backup plan is Jeremy. The day he chewed me out for criticizing Megan, I knew he was ready for my job. And Megan is ready to start taking over a lot of what Jeremy did and she can hand off some of her duties to Theo. Well, how about if we move you to a non-managerial position? That article makes it bad for me to be associated with Brace. You still have to maintain and explain the system. You'll be okay? I'm holding on to the newspaper article. A lot of people might want to hire a tough manager. If Bonnie uh, agrees, will you agree? I would miss you. You needed me to get Brace to the finish line. You need Jeremy to repair all the bridges I burned. Well, if Bonnie agrees. Uh... Hey, uh, Don, could you uh, let Hank and I talk alone? Sure, sure. Got a question about your strategy. Why go to a newspaper article when you had Megan's case moving to a stage two grievance? Megan's case was your best weapon. Megan canceled her flight to Vegas. So she's not marrying the doofus. Got cold feet. It would have made the arbitration hearing very tough. You know, Megan would have said, Hank, I was so outraged when Hank told me I couldn't marry Derek. But well, then the arbitrator would have asked, well, did you marry Derek? Why not? <laughs> so, the, oh, so the best way to make the case stick was to encourage her to marry Derek. And some tricks I can't play. Thanks. Look, Jeremy's a nice guy. Could you give him a break by not making him deal with Evan? Have Evan take the three months of severance and quit while he still can. If I stay, I'll spend all my energy trying to fire Evan. Well, if you did quit, what would you do with yourself? Oh, I think I'm done with Washington, D.C. I might just head out to Ohio. Where your kids are? Oh, that would be wonderful, Hank. I should have gone a long time ago. I'd miss you. I'd miss you, too. But let's do what's right for you, me, and Evan. He can exit a hero for getting rid of me. Oh, I think I can talk Evan into taking this deal. Well, don't take the deal on my behalf. You have to be true to the union. Oh, I am, I am. Every other manager who ever tried to fire someone gave up eventually. But you, <laughs> you built a pretty good case. Thanks. Sometimes in life, you have to be like the linebacker who crashes toward the quarterback with all his body and soul and puts everything in that one hit. And then you win. The game is over and you go home. <laughs> Send me photos of those kids or I'll file another grievance. I won't even be employed by the federal government. How can you file a grievance? Oh, simple. I get creative with the federal law. I learned from the master. <laughs>